you want to check it on your phone, maybe. All right, we're live. Anybody out there tuning in? Morning, everybody. While we get settled, I'll just play some some music, and then uh, we'll we'll get this started. So hang tight, and we'll uh, get it going very soon. Well, good morning, everyone. Not the usual way I am uh, uh, accustomed to spending Sunday morning, uh, as for most of you as well. Um, but I appreciate you joining us or coming back and checking this out later on. Um, we are fortunate to be able to have the ability uh, to be able to share our worship and to gather in a new way 
uh, even as we try to look out for one another and we try to take part in what everyone around us is doing right now to do our part in making sure that folks stay safe, that the vulnerable among us are cared for in the best way that we're, we're able to do right now, and also to go ahead and to find ways to help out our caregivers uh, and to find ways to not strain their resources as they do such excellent things to look after us and to put themselves at risk while they do it. So thank you. I'm glad that you're here. Um, hopefully in the midst of all the flurry of emails and announcements and changes that have been taking place for us and for everybody else, uh, you've had the ability to kind of keep track of what's going on. Um, just as we're not worshiping here in the building on Sunday morning, and we won't be either next week, um, also the different kind of social gatherings and groups that we usually have, we're postponing those things. We're calling them off for the time being, uh, again, in an effort to go ahead and to look after one another and to be responsible stewards uh, and taking care of what other people are trying to do as well. Um, that doesn't mean that we can't gather in new ways. Uh, already tomorrow evening, church council is going to be uh, meeting, you know, via teleconference. Um, we can find ways to check in on each other, to call, to email, to see what's going on. Um, and as folks maybe get a little bit stir crazy, if they are able to go ahead and withdraw, there may be even more need for that. Um, so we'll be talking about that in the days to come. Look for further communications and some ideas about how to spend this time fruitfully. Um, normally in announcements, we kind of run down all the different activities that were taking place, and we had a lot of them. Um, but simplified, once again, you can look at the weekly update that went out. And if you're not receiving that, let us know, and we'd be happy to send it to you. Uh, but we're going to take a pause. And so those gatherings, those groups are going to be taking place. Uh, also for this coming week, we're going to go ahead and have the office hours for the church suspended. Um, and the staff's going to be uh, working from home. Uh, but I'll be checking the messages and the emails here uh, and get back to you that way. And I'm always reachable via my email uh, or my cell phone. Um, so please don't hesitate to get in touch. And if you need anything or you know of someone else who might need something, and whether that be a spiritual need, a pastoral need, or just real life kind of needs of groceries and transportation, other kinds of issues, uh, please let me know. And I'll be happy to go ahead and to connect and to, to make things happen. Uh, one of the things that's changed this year is that uh, the world has kind of paid attention to this and changed up plans. And so um, I'm happy to announce that for the first time since we have been running March Madness brackets here at the church, um, I think I'm actually going to win this year uh, because uh, my bracket is completely empty and it has no winner, uh, which is accurate. Um, I'm wondering if they're going to run that competition where they give away all that money for the person who has a perfect bracket. Uh, if so, this could be an awesome year, and I, I promise I'll give some to the church. Uh, so I uh, just wanted to update you on, on my good fortune. Also to point out uh, that uh, it's not all bad news, um, that this coming week we have St. Patrick's Day and uh, a time to go ahead and to celebrate and find ways to go ahead and enjoy in your own way, uh, but also the first day of spring coming up this week. And for those who have any allergies, you already knew that. Um, but uh, that's also something, a positive change that's taking place as the days are lengthening, as the name Lent describes. Um, so I hope that you're, you find some enjoyment and maybe get out and maybe use some extra freedom if you're able to have it uh, to go ahead and to take that stuff in. As we get started today, I want to begin with a little bit of a different devotional time uh, or meditation time than we usually do. Uh, normally you have your bulletins in front of you and there's a, a, a pretty profound thought to go ahead and ponder for a little bit as we gather for worship and we hear that wonderful music. Um, but I want to share something uh, that is a little bit more lengthy, uh, but I think is, is on point. Um, it's from our United Church of Christ daily devotional email just that came out yesterday. And this is one of the things I'm going to send you information about if you would like to go ahead and subscribe so that you can have your connection, your spiritual practices taking place even when we can't physically gather. The one that came out yesterday was by Professor Mary Ludy, and um, she is a, a wonderful preacher and teacher, and um, she wrote just to the heart of what a lot of people are feeling right now. She began uh, with a reflection out of the Psalms, Psalm 91, verses 5 through 6, and that passage says, Do not fear the terror of night nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at noonday. So these are her words. The Bible is always telling us not to be afraid. And that's because there's so much real stuff to be afraid of. Like now, as shelves empty, markets tank, leaders dither, and old people die in a day. 
Life is scary enough in ordinary times. It is much scarier now. So the Bible exhorts us again, don't be afraid. And yet people are. Even Bible-believing people, some are downright terrified, hoarding enough toilet paper to last till 2039. And like clockwork in our nasty age, they get roundly mocked on social media, called out as irrational, impervious to scientific information, bad, stupid, and wrong. Maybe you're heeding both the Bible and good scientific information. Maybe you're feeling reassured and calm. Maybe you're side-eyeing the panicky too. But here's the thing. Fear is fear, and human beings are what we are. All of us by nature are vulnerable and exposed. So admit it. Aren't you also just a little bit afraid? No, no, no matter how much you know or how often you wash, don't you also feel foreboding? I know I do. A drastic spike in the infection rate could find me searching for a case of Charmin too. It would be great if we were all at our rational best right now, but we're not. Optimal if we all rose brilliantly to this occasion, but we won't. So the next best thing is to dismount our high horses, summon some empathy from that quavering place inside us where we too feel afraid, and cut each other some slack, and just be kind. And she closed her reflection with this prayer. If you can't make us unafraid, O oh God, at least make our fears a bridge to others, an empathetic tie that binds. Amen. We're going to worship this morning, and it's going to be familiar and different. Uh, we're kind of treating this as if we are gathered in small group because it feels like that probably where you are. Um, so uh, you'll be able to recognize what we're doing anyway. And as we have our times of prayer, um, reflection, as we have the music uh, that Andre and Mary are, are so kind to go ahead and offer us this morning, I hope that you will treat this just as you would if you were with us in the sanctuary to open your heart, to pray yourself, opening your heart and your mind to God, um, and to think of others that we are normally able to gather with on a regular basis and to hold them in your thoughts and prayers and to realize that we do have the ties that bind us even when we're apart. I'd like to invite you to join with me in a, in a moment of prayer this morning. And um, at, the, at the conclusion, we'll join together, and you can do this where you are. We'll share the Lord's Prayer uh, as a community. So please join with me. God, as we uh, try totally new things, and it's kind of exciting in some ways, we ask that you be with us. Everybody's life is a little bit different right now, and some are facing extraordinary demands. And as we've just reflected, pretty much everybody has some unease or worries or questions or fear. But God, you remain constant. Nothing has changed. You are with us. You've given us unimaginable wisdom. You've given us special individuals who have the abilities of leadership, of the abilities to go ahead and to look at your creation and to understand it more and more each day and to work alongside you in the healing that is needed. God, we ask that you would continue to do what you have always done, that you would be a part of our lives, that you would work with us, that you would bolster us when we need strength, that you would connect us into community, even if that has to happen in new and different ways, and that you'd help us above everything else to realize as we move through this, we are doing it with you at our side, where you have been every moment of our life. So God, as grateful as we are for that gift, we now want to open up to you and to share the prayer that Jesus taught us, and we'll pray this together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
it's our custom when we gather to early in the service, take a moment to kind of seek healing in ourselves, in our relationships with each other, in our relationships with God and with creation. Um, that takes the form of confession. Um, and we usually as a congregation pause and all of us allowed uh, take a time to go ahead and think about one particular part of those relationships and um, to go ahead and ask God to be with us as we examine where we've been, as we think about some of the regrets or the grief or the worry we have about the steps and missteps that we've taken, and also then to turn around and help us to understand that none of that has made God love us any less, push us away, or give up on us. And in fact, God offers healing in so many ways, and God offers encouragement for the life ahead of us. So I want to just again ask if you would spend a moment, think about your life and where it is right now, where there is a need for healing touch or where you need to hear that message that you are forgiven, even when sometimes you're the last person to do it for yourself, and lift that up to God in prayer. So we'll begin just with a moment of silence, and then I'll, I'll lead us in just a moment of reflection. God, none of us are perfect, and we know that truly and deeply. But also we know that you love us. We know that even as sometimes we wish you weren't right there and you didn't see, and sometimes when we are quivering and we are too scared to go ahead and to reach out and to be the body of Christ in the world, God, sometimes we wish those things could just kind of be swept under the rug. But they're part of who we are. They're part of the lessons that we've learned, and sometimes those are important lessons that teach us what we want to do differently, given the opportunity in the future. So we ask God that you give us wisdom from the life that we've led, that you'd help us to understand that all of that is in the past. Help us to really believe the word that you forgive us and that you heal us in amazing ways, that you offer shalom and peace that no one else can really give, and help us to look to the future and to understand that that is still unwritten, that there is so much that's within our power that we can make choices every day that bring us closer to you and closer to one another and that help us to find that we can really be a light in this world when it needs it most. We ask for bravery. We ask that we can reflect your love. And we ask right now that we would truly believe in our hearts that we are forgiven and loved. Amen. And at this time, I want to have us pause, and, and we're going to have a moment, uh, kind of a hymn time, uh, some wonderful spirituals that Andre is going to offer, ones that are not uh, protected under copyright so that we have the ability to share them today, um, and uh, we're grateful for that. So now let's take this time just to reflect. Is there anybody here who lost my I want to know if you love my Jesus. I want to know if you love my Lord. This world's a wilderness of woes, so let us all to glory go. Is there anybody here who loves my Jesus, anybody here who loves my Lord, I want to know if you love my Jesus, I want to know if you love my Lord. When I was blind and could not see, King Jesus brought the Star refuses to shine. 
Thank you, Andre. Uh, we are grateful for his music today. Uh, I know that's one of the things that would be uh, really sorely missed if we didn't have this way of sharing. Uh, I know people look forward to it every week, along with our excellent choir and organist. Um, we're now going to take a moment to hear a word from Scripture. And usually I'm a person who kind of sticks with passages what's from what's called the lectionary, where we move along in step with churches from all different backgrounds and denominations and look at the same passages and we ponder some of the same things that other folks are looking at in their faith communities. Um, and I kind of, I, I appreciate that unity and I appreciate uh, being able to move through the season that way. We would have been talking about uh, Jesus meeting a Samaritan woman at a very important well. And it's a, a wonderful passage and good for Bible study. And maybe that would be a fruitful use of some of the time this week. And I can share that with you again, as I give you some ideas. Um, but uh, as we were hearing from folks and reflecting on these times, and specifically when the, the three acting conference ministers for the Southern New England or conference, Southern New England conference, sorry, it's a new name for a conference, uh, were communicating with us and talking about uh, their advice in these times. Uh, Kent Salati, uh, the, one of those acting conference ministers, chose a passage from scripture that I thought really did speak to this time and choices that we're making in all aspects of our life. Uh, so I'm going to share with you out of the, the letter to the Romans in the 15th chapter, and I'll begin at verse 1. Those of us who are strong and able in the faith need to step in and lend a hand to those who falter and not just do what is most convenient for us. Strength is for service, not status. Each one of us needs to look after the good of the people around us, asking ourselves, how can I help? That's exactly what Jesus did. He didn't make it easy for himself by avoiding people's troubles, but waded right in and helped out. I took on the troubles of the troubled, is the way scripture puts it. Even if it was written in scripture long ago, you can be sure it's written for us. God wants the combination of his steady, constant calling and warm personal counsel in scripture to come to characterize us, keeping us alert for whatever he will do next. May our dependably steady and warmly personal God develop maturity in you so that you get along with each other as well as Jesus gets along with us all. Then we'll be a choir, not our voices only, but our very lives singing in harmony in a stunning anthem to the God and Father of our Master Jesus. May we hear these words and ponder them and know that they are not just a voice for the past, but they speak to us truly today. Amen. The translation I shared that from, by the way, is not the Pew Bible translation that we normally uh, read from, but rather it's from a translation called the Message that seeks to get at some of the meanings underlying uh, the words that we have there. Um, so it's worth looking up and hearing uh, different voices and, and understanding a little bit about what scripture has to say to us. Um, we are smack dab in the middle of this season of Lent, this time of spiritual preparation, um, getting ourselves ready for a lot of things, but especially to move to Holy Week and to think about what Jesus did for us, what he went through, and then also the message that was revealed on Easter that we're never going to encounter anything in this world that is more powerful than God's love, and that includes the power of death. Those are all really wonderful things, and we often ask people to go ahead and think about um, what can you do to change your life during this time? Uh, maybe withdraw for some distractions. Uh, a lot of people have that kind of old practice of uh, giving something up for Lent, and, and that includes uh, in this very room, I know, at least one thing that's been given up for Lent. Um, what we never probably would have encouraged anyone to do necessarily was to give up physically going to church for Lent. Um, so we are off book at this point. Um, don't count on us doing this every year in case you're wondering, um, but it, it, we're doing it for good purposes and we'll, we'll think a little bit more about that as we go. We should have known, a lot of people have pointed out that this was going to be a crazy week with all sorts of unusual things going on right from the beginning. Um, when, uh, we had the daylight savings change that happened and then we had a week of the full moon. Uh, we have Friday the 13th, and I haven't had a lot of people point out, but today is the Ides of March, uh, which is not exactly an auspicious uh, date in history. 
So um, if you add all those things up, you don't have to be superstitious just to feel like you're piling on at some point and, and uh, maybe we were due for uh, something kind of breaking through and changing. What I've really enjoyed in the midst of difficult times, really, frankly, I enjoy in good times and in hard times, is the ability for folks to find humor and to try to cheer each other up and to make light and, and to take things that are heavy and make it just a little bit easier to deal with them. So I have been just really enjoying some of the responses that folks have had as we've made our way and learned and tried to figure out how to be the best neighbors we can be to one another. Um, it started, of course, with these messages about washing our hands and there's all kinds of different uh, approaches people have done about like, you know, 20 seconds and making sure you get into every area of your hands. And so they started to say, well, you can recite uh, this prayer or this passage from Shakespeare or you can offer uh, this song, this musical from Broadway. That If you sing this one, it's going to get you at least 20 seconds. Uh, so people were giving all kinds of tips about how to do that. And of course, um, it highlights maybe how poor our practices have been normally about washing our hands that we need so much instruction uh, about the right way to do it. So like Lent, hopefully some of the lessons we learn don't just last for a short time, but we kind of pick this up and keep going with it. Um, but some of the people who've offered advice I thought were particularly hilarious. So when I saw one that said, wash your hands like you have a club stamp you don't want your mom to see, I thought that was um, something that would hit home for some people anyway, not me, uh, because I lived a perfect and holy life my whole life. Um, or uh, uh, if this may relate to some others with some different uh, loves, one said, uh, wash your hands like you just ate Cheetos and you're about to crochet with white yarn. Um, so if that's a more wholesome uh, illustration, except for the Cheetos being bad for you, uh, that works too. But they made me laugh. Um, another one is the realization of how much we touch our faces. Uh, if you're somebody like me right now, I notice what I'm doing with my hands and it's driving me crazy because I have no idea what to do on the camera. Um, but uh, what people start to realize very quickly if they start paying attention to touching their face as medical professionals have to do all the time is just how much we touch our faces, how, how often it happens. And so I did see someone uh, pointing out that, that we didn't need to invent anything to really help out with this, that we already have the tools needed so they did a picture of a person wearing the collar of shame that you can get from a veterinary clinic. So the cone that keeps uh, dogs and cats and whatever from getting at their faces when they need to have a time away from that. Um, so the suggestion was if we wore that, we'd be fine. Um, if you're really struggling with this, uh, again, I'm happy to run out and get something for you. So just let me know and we will hook you up. The pure humor at the beginning then, of course, also turned to people pointing out, as Mary Ludy pointed out, uh, what others are doing as this has gone further. Um, I have seen so many people sharing pictures or accounts of just going out in the past couple of days and trying to find basic necessities that they would have normally even, or maybe trying to stock up for an extended period of time at home, or now with kids at home and everybody at home, uh, maybe realizing you're going to go through everything a lot faster. Uh, and then just seeing empty shelves and crowds of people and lines to the backs of stores and, and people trying to do what's necessary, but also maybe acting out of fear or, as some pointed out, maybe doing some survival mechanisms as well. You know, there's been some folks who pointed out that uh, wine might be the necessity for some folks. So uh, there's all kinds of different categories about what's really important. It's been interesting to see kind of that snowstorm feeling when you can still step outside in the warmth and uh, enjoy the spring that's coming. But I think we're all seeing that. One of the best responses, I thought, as this new realization was coming, that we should be conscious of our contact with each other and, and be a part of slowing down everything that was happening, was a terrific tweet, a terrific message that went out from someone who said, I guess we're about to find out which meetings could have been emails after all. Um, and again, I'm curious as to what will outlast this time. Uh, if we're going to change things, if we're going to have some, some new patterns to our life as a result of this. Still, if any of these things have been going on, if you're joking about it just to go ahead and get a smile on your face because it's been stressful and you're constantly watching the news and trying to keep up to date and know what you should do, and uh, if all those worries and anxieties are coming along, then maybe one of those messages we do need to hear in the midst of being human and having this reaction and worrying is to go ahead and understand that it's right and proper that we take a moment and we try to center ourselves. We try to find some peace 
and so that we can approach things from that place. And God is certainly a help for so many of us in being able sometimes to draw back and with that Easter time message, understand that God's mightier than anything we're ever going to face. And so we need to go ahead and allow God to work with us and to help us to chart our way through and find the wisdom that we need. One of those messages that's gone viral, um, and I love that it has, it's a positive message. It's a good message to get out there. Um, and I don't know where it started, but it's a handwritten note um, and it's uh, addressed from a pastor. And it says, dear everybody, feel like you are spinning out of control. Breathe, breathe and breathe again. Just be still and breathe. The very air you breathe in is the spirit. Be still and let it take effect. Feel the calm. Peace be with you. It's with you always. Love your pastor. And then there's a postscript. Wash your hands. So uh, there's some wisdom there to kind of center ourselves and to uh, approach this from a different perspective. Our passage from Romans gave us a different perspective as well, uh, helping us to go ahead and think about not only ourselves, which is never the way a Christian should approach the world or any follower of God, or any person who's looking out to try to find the best way to live their life. Instead, we need to be mindful of others and we need to think about how we can serve others. We need to not think about if we are in a better place, we're doing okay and finding pride or status in that, but realizing that means we have an opportunity then to help those who might find themselves struggling within their health, within their ability to go ahead and to be safe as they try to provide for themselves or their families. And we need to think not only of ourselves, we need to think always of each other. And that has led us to decisions like the one we have right now, where you're sitting there unfamiliar worship style behind technology or watching this later, um, innovating, but also uh, changing things up. So many of us have talked about this idea of flattening the curve, and that may be unfamiliar still to some, but this concept that says, as hard as it is, if we can get ourselves to pull apart a little bit for a time, uh, what we can do is not eliminate the virus or stop people from getting sick entirely, but that we can look out for each other, we can slow it down, and one of the best effects of that is that as folks do get exposed at different times, then if they need help, will we have help available for them? Um, and that is a profound, selfless way to think about caring for each other, even if it means changing our lives in significant patterns. Uh, I think one of the best illustrations we can have about why this is important is something I mentioned earlier and something a lot of people are seeing or experiencing. And that is if you go to the store right now and you're looking for hand sanitizer or toilet paper or bread or some other things, I think we all know how difficult it is to find those things. And that's because everybody decided they needed them at the same time. If we were still getting them as we always have in plenty of supply, but just as needed, spaced out a little bit further apart, this wouldn't be happening. This idea of flattening the curve, of getting some distance, is to go ahead and prevent that very same thing from happening to our loved ones, the people we don't even know, who could use that care so at the time they need it, they'll be able to get everything that they need. And also looking after our healthcare workers because they take risks in caring for us. And we want to go ahead and to keep those as low as possible so that they can do their wonderful jobs. Well, if we're gonna observe this, if we're gonna kind of keep separated, if we're gonna uh, change our lives up, there's no reason we can't use this for good purposes. Uh, I've seen some folks point out that some people have done sensational things when they have kind of withdrawn and uh, tried to separate to have some safety for health. Uh, this one's been repeated by some pretty reputable people, so I feel like it's true. Um, it said that in 1665, the University of Cambridge temporarily closed due to the bubonic plague, which this is not. But Isaac Newton worked from home, and during that time, he developed calculus and the theory of gravity. I don't think I'm grateful for the calculus part of it, um, but uh, still pretty impressive. Another one, and I'm sure we'll get some remarks from people who know better, and I haven't fact-checked this, so I'm being responsible by saying it's just something I saw, was that Shakespeare, when he was quarantined for a similar fear, uh, wrote King Lear. Um, I don't know how many of us 
are going to be able to kind of have ma massive breakthroughs like that. It may be that after all this is done, Andre's going to have a raft of new compositions that will be groundbreaking. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, exactly. See? Um, but just even if we're not necessarily going to change the world with the choices we make now, we can still do some pretty wonderful things if we use this time creatively. Uh, a minister, among other things, Lynn Unger, uh, decided to write some poetry as she thought about this time and responded to it. And again, this is something that has spread uh, in a good way uh, to so many people in a time when it was needed. Uh, the title is kind of ominous, it's Pandemic. Um, but I'm going to share this with you so you can hear it in case you haven't or be reminded. She says, what if you thought of it as the Sabbath, the most sacred of times? Cease from travel, cease from buying and selling, and give up just for now or trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life, center down. And when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has become clear. Do not reach out your hands. Reach out your heart. Reach out your words. Reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise the world your love for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, so long as we all shall live. Sabbath is an entirely different way to think about this. We still wanna support the businesses that depend so vitally on us and think creatively of ways that we can do that. There are so many folks right in our community who could use our support as they try to make it through a very difficult time um, so that's one of the things we need to think very creatively about, uh, how we can go ahead and make sure this does not um, become a different type of tragedy for them. But during the Sabbath time, maybe we can refocus. We can use this time creatively. We can use this time for our relationships with our family. We can use this time for relationships with God or reordering who we are in our lives. One person made a suggestion that if there are young children at home and there's a lot of time on their hands, Maybe this is the perfect opportunity to draw some things or write some cards and send them to a place like Avon Health Center for people who are not allowed to have visitors at this time in any way, really, except for those who are caring for them, uh, to spread a little bit of cheer and to give them a bright note uh, as they go through some times. It could also be a time, prayerfully, to think about what we're grateful for and really think about what we have and the people in our lives and the meaning they have for us. One of the things in the weekly update was a link that Lisa shared from our office to the normal thing we've had in our bulletins from SALT Project with important dates for this week. And so you'll learn a lot about St. Patrick and some other pieces. Uh, but one of the things it pointed out was this week uh, would have been uh, Mr. Rogers' birthday. And of course, we're thinking a lot about Mr. Rogers right now. Um, so I want to share one more thing with you this morning. And it's found there too. So you can go back and find the words at the link that she provided. But these are his words. And I think this could be a useful thing for us to do during this time. He said, I'd like to give you all an invisible gift, a gift of a silent minute to think about those who have helped you become who you are today. Some of them may be right here now. Some may be far away. Some, like my astronomy professor, may even be in heaven. But wherever they are, if they've loved you and encouraged you and wanted what was best in life for you, they're right inside yourself. And I feel that you deserve quiet time on this special occasion to devote some thought to them. So let's take just a minute in honor of those that have cared about us all along the way, one silent minute. Whomever you've been thinking about, imagine how grateful they must be that during your silent times, you remember how important they are to you. It's not the honors and the prizes and the fancy outsides of life which ultimately nourish our souls. It's the knowing that we can be trusted, that we never have to fear the truth, that the bedrock of our lives from which we make our choices is very good stuff. That's at least one good idea for the time you have. And maybe if we think of some more creatively together and communicate with that with each other as a community, uh, we can find ways to become that choir and to sing with that harmony that's described in Romans 
and come out of this with new gifts, even as we have had a difficult time. Amen. You've listened a long time to me. I appreciate that. When there's nobody here to point out the clock, I get to talk as long as I want. Uh, but now we're going to take a moment just again to reflect and to use a different part of our brain. And so we're so grateful Mary's going to share some music with us now. ask if you're clapping at home, but actually I got a chance to go over and to see uh, some of the responses that are going on right now and uh, see all the hearts that started flying up as Mary uh, began to, to share that. So uh, not that I'm jealous or anything, but that was, uh, that's nice. That's a nice way to be able to share that with folks. Uh, normally in our worship, if we were kind of all together at this point, we'd have the time of offering as we think about now how we go ahead and head out into the world, how we make a difference, how we use what God's given us to change things. And of course, we've been reflecting on that. Um, I could go ahead and take a moment to ask Andre and Mary to try to make up for what you guys aren't able to hand to me right now, uh, personally. Um, they're sharing gifts too, though, so that's pretty amazing. Uh, during this time of separation, we appreciate the support, though. Um, I know I've had inquiries from folks asking about what the best way to get their support in, their pledges. And we really appreciate that we're on your, your mind that way and that you're steadfast in your support of the church. Um, and, and certainly anything can be mailed in uh, to go ahead and to offer. Um, our website, Little Known Fact, has an ability to take credit card transactions with a fee. Uh, so know that not the entire amount would come to the church, but for some that's more convenient. And so there is that option. And we're grateful for folks who do electronic fund transfer, and that's always an option for people uh, to set up regular transfers to go ahead and support uh, the commitments they've made. Um, and, and it makes a real difference at a time like this. Um, so we're grateful. We're in the midst of our stewardship campaign, trying to make our plans for what we're gonna do for the coming year and uh, what support we have for that. And we appreciate everybody who sent in their pledges. Um, we have actually a good message from David Woodworth, uh, one of the leaders here at the church. Uh, reflecting on the church and, and giving to the church and why it's important. And I'm going to send that out in a separate email for folks to be able to, to take that in. Uh, so you have that to look forward to. I also want to take just a moment and highlight something, and I'll share this as we go. But we just had conversation at our Board of Outreach uh, about supporting a new initiative from our conference, and it's something that's going on more broadly. Um, they've asked, as we head towards Easter, um, if all of the churches in our conference could uh, think about offering support to an organization called RIP Medical Debt. If you, after this, go and just look that up on the internet or go to YouTube, frankly, there's a number of no news stories there about it. Um, what you're going to find out is, is this is an organization from 
put together by some folks who used to purchase medical debt and then settle it for a profit, essentially, um, at a much lower amount than what it originally was, but still to be able to take in money from that. Um, and they decided to change things up. So instead of doing that anymore, they still want to look to purchase folks medical debt, but they wanted to purchase folks who found themselves in great difficulty because of their medical debt. Um, and then not to go ahead and turn around and collect on it, but then to forgive that debt. Um, and they've been very successful with this. And some of the things you'll see if you look them up is uh, there was a lot of news about it, that churches in Chicago, including ones from our denomination, took part in a joint effort and they erased $5.3 million in debt. And more recently in January, St. Louis area churches raised enough to get rid of $12.9 million in medical debt and other instances. And when I saw those numbers, I thought, well, how in the heck are we going to go ahead and make a difference like that? I mean, that seems tremendous. And I didn't understand all the mechanics at that time. But what's clear when you start to research it is basically for every $100 we can raise, this organization can erase $10,000 worth of medical debt. And that's a tremendous payoff. It's similar to the idea that when we use financial support for things like gifts of love, they have access to be able to get food at a much reduced, reduced cost. So sometimes they can get it a, a lot more efficiently that way to go ahead and help more people. Uh, this is pretty tremendous if you think about that turnaround. The folks that we're going to be helping uh, by contributing through an Easter time offering uh, are going to be centered here in southern New England communities like Springfield, Massachusetts, uh, Bridgeport and Hartford, Connecticut and Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, they're going to only target folks who have certain criteria and they need to either earn less than two times the federal poverty size based on the state and family size, uh, that their debts are 5% or more of their annual income, or that they're facing insolvency and in debts that are greater than their assets. So they'll look for those folks first and then they'll figure out who they can help the most. Um, I'm bringing it up now because I want you to think about this and think about ways to support this. Um, and that could be beyond just the, the group of us here at the church. Um, this is bigger than that, and it's a way to make a real difference for folks. We'll certainly take any gifts at any point for this, uh, and you can either mark them RIP Medical Debt and make them out to West Avon Church or WACC, um, or you could say uh, Easter Outreach Offering would work just as well. Um, but I wanted to take a moment here while I had your attention to, to let you know about the opportunity and to do that. And um, we're going to take just a, a quick moment here to, to ask a blessing for the ways we do give and for continuing to do that. God, we may not be passing a plate around right now, which wouldn't be the best practice anyway, uh, but we give to this church in so many ways. We're grateful for the volunteers who just so freely offer so much of their time and their talents and their ingenuity. Uh, we're grateful for the staff here and for the amazing abilities that they offer. Uh, we're grateful for folks who turn around when they've been a part of this community and then look to the world and try to be good stewards by sharing what they have learned and realizing what God has given them and making a difference. And we are very grateful for folks who financially support this church or give gifts of food or other items that we can share to others. Uh, those material things make a difference and they help to support our ministries. So thank you, God. And we give thanks for the ability to do it. We give thanks for generous hearts and hands and for the ability to move forward working with you. Amen. We're getting near the end of things here today, um, but we also usually take a time to lift up our prayers of the people, our joys and concerns. Um, we want to be very uh, aware that this is a platform, as we have it right now, that's open to anybody. We're, we're sharing this publicly, so anybody can come and see it. Um, so it's probably not appropriate to turn around and share uh, names and details of individual circumstances the way we might as a, a gathered community of folks intimately together. Um, but what we'll do instead is I'm just going to offer prayers, uh, and I want you in your heart to be lifting up, as you can at any time, your prayers to God. Um, and then if there are particular things that you want to share with the community, or if you'd like to be aware of particular folks and things that we're lifting up in prayer, we do have something called the Prayer Care Line, and that's an email for people who choose to receive it. Um, and that whenever we have someone offer something they want to have, a number of folks be mindful of and praying about, whether it's a joy or a concern, um, I send that out and um, that's a way to do this. So if you're not on that and you'd like to be a part of it, uh, this is the perfect time to join in um, and we highly encourage that. Uh, but let's join our hearts in prayer right now, if you don't mind. Well, God, we've been reflecting and what the time is like that we're going through. 
Uh, we know that there are all sorts of reasons to have anxieties and fears, and some of that's just about the very current situation, thinking about folks who especially feel most vulnerable and knowing that uh, this could have a, a strong effect on them. Uh, we think about those who are ill, not just from what's going on right now with this virus, but also who are going through other illness and have been contending with that and find new challenges because of this. And we ask God that you would be with all of them. We ask that you would be also with those caregivers who are making an amazing difference. Those who are with our ill or our elderly, um, those who are finding ways to take care of those most in need at this time. And we ask that you be with them, that you would stand by their side as they do this important work when it's most needed and that they know they are appreciated. Also God, as so many people are trying to find ways to be in the Sabbath time of withdrawal, um, there are others who don't have that option because of the necessary skills that they have, because we count on them for food, because they are caring for those who need it, or because financially they're not able to go ahead and to have those options. And God, we ask that you would be with them in the frustrating time and that you would help to see them through. God, sometimes the, the noise of what's going on in the world can seem so loud that it's easy to forget that the things that we contend with throughout our life are still there. So we want to be mindful and know that beyond all of the current events and everything that's taking place, there are those who are grieving loved ones who passed on. There are those who are making important decisions and trying to offer leadership in a time when it's needed most or insight from what they have learned. We ask God that you would be with each of them, that you would be part of their everyday life and they would lean upon you for what you can offer when it's needed. And God, as we think about all those needs, as we think about all those things that folks are, are, are having way upon them or could use your help with, we always want to be mindful of joys, of the things that we're thankful for. Um, and right now, as we reflected, maybe one of those things is to have an opportunity for things to be different. Hopefully, maybe to have some time to regroup, um, to truly deepen our journey, to think about who you are and what you mean to us, to reconnect with the idea of Sabbath, and to think about something my kids learn in school and often throw at me if I pull a phone or something out of the table instead of just visiting with them right there. Uh, maybe this is a time where we can disconnect from distraction and we can reconnect with each other and with you, God. So we're thankful if we have that chance to go ahead and take hold of it and see where it leads us. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus who gathers us in this new way, uh, but we are no less the family of God. Amen. Uh, we're going to share one more uh, hymn this morning, uh, Give Me Jesus, and then we'll have a moment of blessing.
Thank you for joining us, whether in real time or later on. Um, if this has been meaningful in any way to you, if you know of folks who can't get to church for any number of reasons or uh, doesn't don't have a chance to connect in the same way with their church during this time, uh, feel free after this is all done, this is gonna be on that Facebook page sitting there and you'll be able to share it at that point with others. Um, so feel free to share it with them if this would be of help, uh, of use and help them to have a, a time of worship uh, when they otherwise might not be able to. Uh, I want to give thanks before I just offer the blessing once again um, to Andre and Mary for coming and doing this, for their technical support, um, for making it so you can actually hear us, which was sort of the thing we were really concerned about, wanting to make sure that would happen. I know it's an unusual setting, a number of reasons for it, but hopefully it felt intimate. Um, and now I'd like to just ask that you would join with me and we'll ask a blessing to close out this time. God, thank you. Thank you for being with us wherever we are. Thank you for your message, for being with us in times of fear and helping us to understand that those are the very times when we can rise up, when we can respond, when we can be mindful, not only of ourselves, but one another, when we can care for each other, when we can look after one another, when we can be the church in the most important ways possible. And God, as we end this time of worship, help us to understand even more than ever that while it's important that we connect with each other, it's important that we find ways to support each other and uh, let each person know how, how much they are cared for. Uh, there are a number of ways that we can do that. We can learn, we can grow, and we can be the church in exciting new ways and find ways to spread your love as much as possible to everyone who needs it. So God, guide us in those steps, even as we leave this time and place. Amen.